and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's video we are going to check Dashboard that is a monitoring tool for serverless applications. So if you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> So this is another video in the monitoring tools playlist. I have created first an introduction to monitoring tools and what you should know about them and why we should monitor and what we should monitor. So you should go and check that one out if you're interested. Then I have created a video about um, configuring the application that we are going to use in this video. So I have talked about Artillery, that is the tool we are going to use to load test and the application, how we set it up. So if you want to follow the instructions in this video, you might need to check that video first. And then I have talked about AWS tools and started with the third party tools. All the videos and the playlist is linked in the description box of this video and in some of the cards. So go ahead and check them out if you haven't. So in this video, we are going to talk about Dashboard. Dashboard is a third party monitoring tool for serverless application. And I pick it because uh, I heard a lot of it and I have heard the uh, CEO and CTO talk in some meetups in Helsinki because the tool has been built in Estonia that is very close to Helsinki. So I have heard a lot of it and I want to try it out and show you how it works. So. In this video, we are going to grab an application that I already configured in the artillery video, as I said, and we are going to configure the dashboard. We are going to create an account and see how easy it is to set up everything and then check the console as we did with the previous uh, tools. Let's go now to my screen and learn a little bit more about dashboard and how to get started with it. So let's check what is dashboard. Dashboard is a monitoring tool. It provides monitoring, error tracking and structured login. Dashboard, you really don't need to do much to instrument your code. So if you go to Docs, get started setting up Dashboard, basically you need to create an account and then you need to run an AWS CloudFormation stack into your account and that will give some permissions to Dashboard, will create a role and give permissions to Dashboard to kind of instrument automatically your code. So in general, you don't need to touch your code in order to use Dashboard. If you check the documentation, they say that they have support for X-Ray. So I'm going to use um, the code that we created in the X-Ray project in the X-Ray video, that it has the X-Ray instrumentation in the serverless project framework. So we can run this and see how it see how you can see it for uh, X-ray, if you can see the traces and when and things like that. Let's go to the dashboard main page after you have uh, created your account and registered it with your dashboard role. Then you start running some lambdas and everything in that account will get instrumented. So when you open your dashboard, you will see something like this. This is my last hour of execution. I was running some tests here and you can see the cost, the total invocations. The rest duration of each of the invocations, memory utilization, and then under here in this alert, you can see all the errors that my account had in the last 30 days. Then if we continue going down, then you can see your functions, your active, inactive, and deleted. So if we go to the last hour, to the active functions, we can see that, for example, here, let's put it for one day, we have some information of a of our uh, Lambda. So we have this much invocations in this period, no errors. The average invocation is 56 milliseconds. I use 15% of the memory in average. So maybe uh, this means that I need to give smaller Lambdas and this is what it costs and it is the region where this executing. And if I go here, I can see recent invocations. So these are all the invocations, the average time the percentage of memory and if the execution is an anomaly. I really don't understand when this uh, marks this as an anomaly and when it doesn't, so still not sure. But we can see that there is many, many, many. And then for example, this one took quite long, so we can open it and we can see that there is some x-ray tracing here. 
This was a lambda that took 120 milliseconds to execute, so quite a long. And if you click here, then you can start seeing like the sub-segments. See, there is one that is putting something in SQS, so that's maybe why it took so long. Check all these different ones and see the times and, and decide, okay, maybe I want to inspect one or the other. And if you go here, invocations, you can see anomalies that I really don't know what they mean. Errors, if there are some errors. And then retries, if there are retries. And cold starts, you can see the cold starts. And this one, for example, is 44 milliseconds for cold starting this lambda. And here we can see the logs and the traces sometimes come, sometimes don't come. So I don't know what is related to that, but it happens that, as you see in the previous request, we found it. And in this one, I don't know if it's coming, but it's kind of nice. You can see the logs here. And if you click in this AWS, you can view the clouds in, low watch, in CloudWatch, so it will take you there. So after that, we can go to API Gateway and go to the API Gateway we are working with for the last hour. And we can see the executions. And then we can see here the invocations, the duration, the stage, endpoints, and all this kind of information. And then here it's listed the endpoints. You can see here the average time, the amount of errors, the percentage of call stars, and the distribution between the different endpoints of execution. And if you click here, you go to the lambda that is kind of triggered by that by that endpoint. So that's kind of nice. After that, there is alerting. I don't have any any incidents, but I think I need to configure things here so I can get alerts when there is something going on in my account. I have not done it, so bad me. But that's something you can configure. Also, there are errors. These are the errors of the last 30 days, at least those are the ones I can see. And whenever there is an error, you get an email, so that's kind of nice. And in the errors, you can see the errors, when it happened, what kind of error, and then you can see the stack trace and in the request that it happened. So this is me doing stupid things, so it's just typing something wrong. So the whole thing crashed. It's kind of nice to be able to see these errors and you can see some information about the, the context when this error happened. Then there is this project views that I like a lot. So you can create a project view, the title, a description, and then you pick which lambdas belong to that project view. And I already have done that for our current uh, four lambdas for this project. Let's go to the last hour. And here you can see, like you see in the main view, but a more description of this particular four lambdas that you choose or whatever amount of lambdas that you choose and you can see the cost how it's separated between of each of the lambdas if there are errors the memory usage the average duration and then you can see the lambdas and some information about them and you can click on them and then you go back to the function view where you can see all this information the last one is the live tailing. So I have configured this live tailing for this uh, lambda that gets triggered whenever we run the artillery artillery run simple. So that's is hook there. So then we can start taking a look at the different um, requests as they are coming in. It takes a little while to start showing the request they appear here and then you can click on them and you can see them in kind of action so if i click you can see the information as you would see with any other any other lambda and that's it for dashboards i like this tool i think it combines a lot of things that aws has to show like the logs and the AWS tracing with X-Ray in one tool that is easier to visualize that using X-Ray and using CloudWatch, everything is so separate in AWS. So I think this tool is a nice way to, to showcase that. And I like that they send you emails whenever there are errors and it works pretty nice. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And as I'm recording this, I also kind of producing this series so if you have some other tool that you would like to know 
and learn more about it, let me know in the description box. And if their series is already recorded and completed, don't worry, I always make second parts of my series because I like to revisit and more tools happen all the time. So please let me know in the comment box what kind of uh, tools are interesting to you. I always reading the comments. Around here there are other videos from my channel for you to watch, so go ahead and click. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Wubar Toto.